Hey everyone, it's 1010, and I have a special guest again today. Brad X here, the one from 72, the ultra neutral. Yeah, so we're gonna talk today about triangles. So yeah. before, wait, before we get started, and I don't mean to cut you off, which I do famously all the time. Like I'm famous <laughs> for one thing and that's cutting you off. <laughs> Before we get into the triangles, you had a viewer who was on that left comments on your video yesterday. Mm -hmm. And um, he had some really good comments that he said. And I was like, you know, I'm going to go check out this guy's videos and see if he's got videos. So I went over and checked them out. And it's funny because now I'm thinking about because we were talking about we we're talking about the triangles. He actually talks about um, he has his own interpretation and concept of triangles, which I think is worth for people to actually listen to what he has to say about mm -hmm. triangles. So it's like a recent video he just posted like two weeks ago or something in his backlog. So I would say people should go over there and check that check that out. Um, maybe was, we'll put a link to it or something. Yeah, infinite. And it was his birthday yesterday. So happy birthday. Yeah, happy birthday. <laughs> I took it 22. What was his name though? I can't remember his name. Okay, hold on, I'll, I'll check. Okay. Yeah, in martial arts, um, when somebody comes in, and they say it's their birthday. We all we we just tell them we're like, oh, okay, good, it's your birthday. Like, yeah, it's my birthday. What do I get? And we tell them, okay, so we want you to line up right there by yourself, and then everybody make a line because we're all going to give them a gift, and then we we kick them. Wow. <laughs> we all go and kick the person, not to hurt them, just to you know. Uh, that's just, how we do it in Taekwondo. Infinite corridors. Infinite corridors. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's his. That's his name on the. Yes. Okay. And, and he has a channel. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. He had some good, he had some good stuff on his channel. I went and watched, I watched uh, a few hours of, of his footage and stuff. And mm -hmm. So anyhow, let's get back to um, the topic that we're talking about with the, the triangles. So we all know about the pyramid. Um, everybody knows about the pyramid. We all know that that's like a big deal. And before we get into this topic, um, really heavy on a bunch of stuff that that 1010 and myself is fine about the triangles because it definitely rules your your world here at least in the european sense like now yeah. i don't think that they're doing it that they're letting the triangle rule them in china do you i don't think so probably not even in russia no i don't think so either like the triangle seems to be like a mm -hmm. thing that is centered here or it's actually projected here, but it's centered in over in Egypt from the pyramids because the pyramid is on your dollar and you don't know why it's there. It has no business being on the money that you use to spend on every single thing that you buy. All your transactions are done with this great triangle, this pyramid, mm -hmm. you know, so, and it's a block in your mind. And the whole fact that they, you know, the all C and I on there, it's almost like they're telling you that your eye is actually closed to understanding it. Yeah. And not so much as that there is this other being that's the all seeing eye, which that's another thing. But in my perspective, you can't see it, even though it's in your face. Like the eye is there, the pyramid is there. You all know that there's something odd and off about it, but most people don't care and they just accept it and they just, you know, dish out the Anunnaki dollars all day long. Yep, and I think it's something about this pyramid worship. I mean, you call it Illuminati. I know I talked to you about that before, but when I think of illumination or Illuminati, I think of angels, which in turn, you know, is aliens from our perspective. Um, and they have to do some type of disclosure. It's like they show it and they put it in your face, but for some reason, I mean, for years, I had no idea why there was a pyramid on the back of a dollar bill. And, you know, it's like, in God, we trust. And we're all, I mean, at least I was meant to think that it was like God, you know, but it's really. Yeah, you don't ask for it. You, nobody asks, like, most of us, we don't ask for it. The, the moment that we're able to start using money for the first time when you're around four or five years old or whatever, when your parents say, they put a couple of dollars in your hand and say, go over to the counter and go buy what you want or whatever, you know, and they do that. Well, you're, you're actually, you're, 
it's almost like you're agreeing to this thing that mm-hmm. you really haven't understood to agree to it. So it's just pressed upon you at a very young age and it's just pushed on you and it's in your face and they, they want it that way. They have to do it that way. So that way when the, and this is why I believe is when the veil lifts, they can say, Hey, we've been there in your face all this time. And it's proof that you are a lesser being because you cannot figure out you, we put it in your face. You haven't been able to figure out because you are a lesser being, right? It's, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's definitely a proof of structure that we are above you. And we're so far above you and so further more advanced than you are that we can put it in front of your face. It's like if you put um, a like uh, something like a device in front of an animal's face and the animal just looks at it and they just turn their head sideways and they're just like, they can't figure out what the hell you're doing. And yep. you're just like, and, but for you, it's basic, you mm-hmm. know, and but the animal doesn't get it. Well, you guys are all animals looking at this device that's in your face and you're turning your head sideways going. Well, I don't know what the hell it is. And everybody comes up with all kinds of nonsense about it, but they really truly haven't put the point on, you know, look, this is straight alien stuff. And right. it's not that it's just alien stuff, but it's it's in your face to prove that you cannot figure it out. It's not to say that we can all, we can sit back and say, yeah, it's alien stuff, but it's it's more of a symbolic thing to say, you're beneath us. Mm-hmm. You're not able to figure it out. You're an animal and we're the sentient being ruling you. Right. And I know for me, when I was into Christianity, it was difficult for me to understand because I was like, well, this can't be the same God because my God is not this God of, you know, the dollar bill with the pyramid. That's, you know, something else. Right. Mm -hmm. I think you probably had, there was a disconnect there, but now it's not disconnected because it is the God of the Bible, yeah. the alien yeah. of the Bible. We're, we're in total denial. Yeah. We were, we're in total denial because we don't, we, we want to model the things after what makes us feel good. Now I'm going to do a talk later on my channel about resonate, but that's what we do instead of really taking it in for all of it, for what it is. Yes. And I, you and I were talking too about the triangle and you said I, on the last video, I think that the triangle is not it, it seems less human, which makes sense because it's, it's sharp and angular and humans, you know, we're, we're, I would say if we were a shape, it would be more like a circle <laughs> or something, you know, that would be more human. Like, um, I don't know. What do you think about that? Well, your fingerprint itself is a circle. It's made up yeah. of, it's, it's circular, you know, yep. and that's how you identify you know, each human from the other is by these circles that are imprinted on your fingers. Your very fingers are circles. You know, everything you're, you're, what you see out of your, your, your eyes are circles, you know, your, your skull is, I could go, we could all go, we could go on and on about the circles in the body. Yes. It's circular. It's a circle. So (laughs) we're not, we're not as angular, like we're not angular beings and the pyramid you know, doesn't really represent the human race or the humans, because technically we, if you're a human, you are your own race on this planet. Um, And we're also busy looking at the differences when it comes to like ethnicity and culture that there are straight up extraterrestrials that are on our planet that are not human. <laughs> and yeah, they look totally like, infiltrating this this planet. They've yeah. been doing it for a long, long time, and mm-hmm. they own you. They straight yep. up own you guys. Yep. And um, I guess we should. I go to the other one about Jupiter. Should I just get that out of the way? <laughs> <laughs> Save that for last. <laughs> Save the, let's go through the other triangle stuff. Okay. And we'll yeah. tie it all into the Jupiter at the end because we started off with the pyramid. So mm-hmm. let's go through all the other triangle stuff that we found. And then we'll tie it all in at the end with the Jupiters because that's really what it all comes to. Oh, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> if you guys are looking at the screen, because I know a lot of times people just listen to it, but they don't actually watch. And she's going to be posting pictures to give you so you can actually physically see it. You can see what we're talking about. Mm-hmm. So you were talking about Mork yesterday and the triangle. Mm-hmm. And um, 
Do you want to talk a little bit about what you found about Mork and Mindy? Or sh- or- there's, so, there's so much, guys. Here's all, all I want to tell you, because um, I just didn't have enough time to actually prepare to talk about the Mork and Mindy stuff. But we did. I uh, remember when we were talking about triangles, I said, man, doesn't Mork have a triangle on his chest? And you're like, yeah, he does. And so I start looking it up. And all you guys got to do is look up Mork and Mindy and you know what we use code we know you know what we use the jupiters the code for that is just look up mork and mindy and and look up the jupiters um Mm -hmm. and you're going to see a ton of stuff that you're going to be like wow like back in the day you know we didn't really we didn't think anything of it but Mm -hmm. now it's like i need to go back and watch this old corny ass show (laughs) to, to see if there's any like messages in there you know because they control the scripts Make no yep. doubt about it. They control what is seen and what is heard through music, through movies, on your television. And it's very, very clever. And also, I'm going to be making a video where I'm going to make the case that the Jupiters are right, because in their opinion, because, you know, I'm, I'm an ultra neutral person. So I see it in their perspective. But they control all of this stuff. They want you to see it like this Mork and Mindy and all the television shows and all the movies where they keep pushing their culture into you and onto you, you accept it and you celebrate it. So you're celebrating an alien culture. And Mm -hmm. as long as you're constantly celebrating this alien culture, then when the time comes and the veil lifts, they're like, what are you going to do? There's nothing you can do. They're going to be like. Rat. Did you hear my phone call? Yeah, we lost you. You're going to have to repeat what you said. Oh, okay. Um, you, you find that this this stuff, you know, that they've pushed into the culture with everything. You know, all your Marvel stuff, all your DC stuff with the Superman, all that stuff. It's it's all, they, you know, like the whole thing with the Superman, like the one Superman movie when it was Superman Returns, there was a lot of talk of that there was parallels between Superman and Jesus Christ, like there was like this whole thing, the one that had, um, uh, which was Superman Returns, it had, uh, what's his name in it, um, Kevin Spacey, so mm-hmm. like it's, in, it's, it's absolutely genius of what they did, and I'm not speaking against them, and I'm not speaking for them, just so you guys know, I'm speaking of this as a neutral position that I, I see what's happening, and it's very clever, mm-hmm. and it's, it's always in your face, and there it is, right there on Mork's, on Mork's chest. <laughs> yeah and going back like I know a lot of people you know like you and I we went through that whole point of looking up Illuminati stuff and how everybody throws up the triangle in um movies and music and things like that to you know kind of like push this agenda or just to let you know hey this is who runs this planet and you know it it's like that club you said we they push it in our face and I used to just think oh it's um it's big but I didn't realize it was as big as it really is you know like (laughs) it's about a whole other alien race taking over um the human's way of life our way of life and we were talking about how you know, humans, they're trying to make us less human than what we are, you know, um, or how we would originally operate. Um, If we were to look at humans from a perspective years ago, it was like hunter gatherer. Completely um, different. Completely different. The human being is, and you're right, the human being is completely different than the way it was pre-media pre-television pre all this 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 program like once the once the picture the moving pictures started coming out i think mm-hmm. that was like a perfect time for them to just really make a clean sleep in fact um you know all that started and started becoming very big during world war ii and we mm-hmm. all know who became president during world war ii and we know that um harry s truman who is not a true man actually um if you look his ties up to the jupiters i think you guys are going to go down a whole nother a whole nother uh road and you're start you'll you should be able to start seeing the connections if you can't that's that's understandable you're not supposed to literally we don't 
I, especially with me, I get frustrated a lot, but I, I don't mean to because um, I understand that, you know, your minds have, it's so clever. Your minds have been blocked from seeing the truth. It's mm-hmm. supposed to be that way. That's the way it's supposed to be. And you're yep. right. We're not the same. Humans are not the same as what they used to be. No. Um, easily manipulated hive mind. And um, if you're able to break out of that, you kind of feel like you're on your own. <laughs> and, you, and you know that too, Rat, because you've experienced that feeling as well. And um, it, it's it's just amazing to me how much alien stuff is actually out there. I apologize. My, my brain is now going in a hundred directions when it comes to what we were talking about earlier. (laughs) So. Yeah, um, there's a lot of it. It's, it's, they're so, it's so embedded. And and especially now I started talking to you about the Palladians and you're like, Oh God, don't talk about (laughs) not another one. But I will be doing a video where I'll be talking about and breaking down the difference between the four main actors here. And I, I'm, I'm not talking about the reptilians or draconians or, or other species like the um, grays or whatever, but I'm talking about the four main ones that, that involve, you know, this thing that's going on with the timeline involves this, you know, this whole thing with the triangle and all this and stuff. But the, the four main ones that you're going to find is the Anunnaki, the tall whites, the... Um, the Anunnaki, Tall Whites, the Jupiters, and the Palladians, right? Like, I was trying to understand, like, uh, I'll save it. I'll save it for the video. I'll, I'll save that for the video and talk about it because it, I'll end up going down a big, a big route here. But, yeah, there's the four main ones, and people get confused with them. They think they're all the same or, or whatever, or they're not what, they, what people think they are. So we'll talk yeah. about that later. Well, there are people, and, and you and I have talked about this before, that have large platforms, and they are presenting to us, you know, some truth, but they're also presenting a lot of disinformation. And this is, you know, I don't want to say what they're paid to do, but, you know, you don't have a platform like that and you're allowed to have a platform like that. Like you and I will probably never have a platform like that ever. Um, no, because YouTube was, was taken over back when, um, I think back in 2012 or like mm-hmm. right before 2012, right around 2012, YouTube was um, bought out by the media. In fact, they, not only did they buy it out, the uh, news media buy it out, they started uh, posting news reports live on YouTube. Well, before that, before they bought it out, they were not going to post, let YouTube post their content live on their platform when they have a deal with you know television stations right like you're not going to be able to get on youtube and watch live cnn live fox and 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 all the rest of the media when and watch it for free when the fact that they have it you know on on a you know with the cable so when they bought it out then all of a sudden they i remember them announcing saying that well it's good because now you'll get news on youtube for free so they run all this shit, even you, it, mm-hmm. it's all ran. So yeah, we'll never, our, our stuff will never be, you know, um, we'll never get out to a lot of people. It just, even, you know, it just doesn't matter, but whatever, I, you know, um, that's not really the focus here. Anyhow, the focus is just to get our message out, just to say that at least for me, and I'm pretty sure for, for you as, as well, it's just to say that, Hey, we at least said something. Yes. We did not say something. We at least said we, we did our investigations. We, we, uh, we've had alien contact. We have been, you know, uh, brought to places to do things and stuff like that. So we at least have evidence that we're not just saying we're talking about what resonates with us. Or we're just not pulling shit out of, uh, sorry, but we're not just pulling things out of our, our butts and just throwing it up there because we want to get like, share, and subscribes because that's not, that's not our, our mission here. We're just trying to give you guys the information as we see it and as we see it through evidence. And if there's no evidence of the stuff or not enough to bring together, then there's no point, you know, right. talking about it's a waste of time. Mm-hmm. So when it comes to the pyramids, I don't know if we didn't really go over this part, but there's a lot of talk about how the pyramids were made 
like how it was almost physically impossible based upon the size of the the um the stones you know and how they were able to pile them one on top of the other you know do you have any do you remember anything like that learning about that okay so if you guys go and listen to the interview with the reptilian woman Lassiter, um she says that the sixth generation of humans that was here the last one that got extinct out before you were brought here make no mistake about it you were you were also that's the reason why it, it, this this breed of human can only go back about five six thousand years that doesn't even make any that's not ever doesn't make any sense that's the reason why there, there's paleontologists or whatever always out there archaeologists trying to find these these missing links and these connections and it, they should be able just to we should have those things it shouldn't even be have to we have to go look for those things they should already be preserved from over the years to you know pass on from generation to generation but it really only goes back to about five six thousand years that's what makes the people who are christians who believe that you know the young earth theory no it's not a young earth it's a young creation a young um a another you guys are just another civilization that was just implanted here by the tall whites as their experiment so um she says lazarus says that they um that the sixth generation the humans that were here the six generations actually built those pyramids now they had technology that was probably far more succeeding what you have right now and you're already on the verge of your extinction they extinct out when they had further greater technology and like you see those like things where there's these little airplane things that are found like that golden airplane stuff and and it's been a baffle to the um to the archaeologists or whatever about that thing they're like this is a real plane they're like this is a real plane there's nothing and you guys can already watch all the stuff on that well that makes sense because that they're flying airplanes then like you're flying airplanes now because when the tall whites come back they have to blanket the sky so that way they can walk around freely and do what they need to do before mm -hmm. they extinct you out and that's what they were doing then it's almost like they just put it right there in your face this is what we used boom yes. there it is you know and the, and and it's a good possibility the way they built those pyramids it was just regular humans it wasn't giants it wasn't anything else but they weren't um they they may have been more intelligent maybe more stronger maybe less stronger maybe you know slightly different in some ways you know but they were able to do this feat with a type of mechanics that you just do not understand yet they probably were further advanced and they got wiped out just like we talk about the atlanteans that were further advanced and that was probably the the third or second generation so every time they extinct your race your species and mm -hmm. they bring back the next um advancement of you it's slightly different and i think that's what they're doing they're kind of modifying and changing and you literally are nothing you're literally and i i mean i'm sorry i don't want people to get yeah it's i you know how i roll but <laughs> yes. you to them are really just this experiment and when you have the Jupiters coming here and they're promised by the tall whites and the Anunnaki's that this will be your planet. So after this extinction, yes, they get this planet mm -hmm. until the next breed of eight human comes here and they just continue to do what they get to do. While the Jupiters all along will just keep going along and doing what they do. You know, so in some ways that makes it puts them in the right because they're not an experiment. You are. And that's the argument on their case. And damn it, I just blew my own video. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that goes back to remember a while back, you and I had a conversation and I said, I don't feel that we've advanced um, as a civilization here on this no. planet. Now you could say, oh, we have technology. But if you look at the buildings that were created, you know, in other civilizations better than ours, you know, what do we have? We have technology still from 1972, and that's a fact. Touchscreen is 1972. The wheel, like we're still operating at a basic level. They had Tesla, which powered whole cities. You know, it was free electricity that they had. And there's proof of that. How do these people stay cool in their homes? Now we have electricity, we have, you know, basic stuff and we think that we're so advanced but we're not you know we could the, do a whole video on tesla and the fact that he may have been part of the sixth generation of humans that were here before maybe he was getting some mm -hmm. type of you know um because he said he was and you guys don't know this tesla said that he was getting 
information from aliens and people were laughing at him, but yet he changed the whole freaking world. He did. Like, what's wrong with the human species when there's a man who's changing the world, you're depending on his technology mm -hmm. and he directly tells you, I'm working, I'm getting information from alien species. The same thing with over there in Nazi Germany, it's the same shit and they change it, they're changing the world and they're telling you, but yet people sit back and wanna laugh and, and it just shows you how dull skulled and how really dumbed down the humans are when they're intelligent in so many other ways, but they just can't see the pyramid that's in front of their face and what it's from and what it's for. Right, and so you have Elon Musk who is a, a genius, but he's utilizing technology that's already been created he didn't come up with that on his own. I mean, we have computers, you know, that were created. We have the shaky robot from 1972, but I bet a lot of this stuff was already created and advanced way beyond its years. But, you know, I still think we're, we're living in 1972 technology, but just because we have technology doesn't mean that we've advanced. If anything, it's pushed us to a place where we're de-evolving. We're not going any further as um, as a as a as the human race, you know. And merging with technology is not evolution. I don't care if you yeah, shove all types of, of chip microchips into your brain. That does not mean that your species is evolving. You're using an outside substance. Look, there are alien species out there that can do everything that your technology can do and they just do it with thought. They just do it with, you know, mm -hmm. with telekinesis, with, with telepathy, the power of flight, they can just levitate. You have to use a vehicle to do that, to move as fast as a, spe as a speeding vehicle. Sometimes there's ones that probably can just teleport from one point to another. You need a vehicle to do that. They don't need it. Right. right. Some can do it. Now, there's obviously they, they use vehicles as well, but they don't have to use vehicles for a lot of things or have to use the technology for a lot of things. But yet your species somehow thinks that this is uh, you guys evolving. And that's just it just it, it helps build the case. So, yeah, look, look how dumb they are. Let's replace them. And I want to yeah. go back to the pyramid real fast. You know, Thanks. it's a very good possibility that the sixth generation knew that they were about to be extinct. And because they, that some of them knew that they were going to be extinct, they said, and they, they knew that, okay, they were told that there was an extinction five times before that, and you're going to be extinct too. And it's a good possibility that they said, let's build this structure and put it here, this pyramid, mm -hmm. so that when the next generation comes, they'll know that we were here. That could yep. be a possibility. Where'd the Poss Mayans go? They disappeared. They, they built a triangle. They had a pyramid. Yep. And they have a pyramid too. And what about, um, well, Stonehenge was a circle and they mm -hmm. wanted to remember them too. Um, mm -hmm. And a lot of that stuff has been left for us to try to piece together, you know? And yeah, if anything, technology, well, it's nice. You and I can have this conversation and we can post it on YouTube. It's done nothing but de-evolve our species, you know, and mm -hmm. make you know, because how many people are out there actually utilizing the internet to make themselves aware of things that aren't? You know how you evolve past that? Push your telepathy. If you if your species had telepathy, we could mm -hmm. all communicate without the without using the internet. Imagine yeah. that. Look how the internet changed everything. And and because of 1972 DARPA and 1972 Bill Gates, you have the internet. Yep. Yeah. You have the World Wide Web, a web of you need it. If you have telepathy, we would not need it. No, it's a web of entanglement. And yeah. you're right, it takes away your natural human abilities. So if we can focus on becoming more human again and tap into what we naturally have because we have the ability to speak to each other. I mean, you and I do it. Mm -hmm. I, I, <laughs> it's weird. It is weird. And, You'll be and it's like, involuntarily sometimes. I'm like, I don't want to <laughs> get out of there. <laughs> I, yeah, I don't want to see this. <laughs> yeah. Um, you'll, I'm like, I'm like, on the toilet. What do you want? <laughs> yeah. Leave Are me you alone. training right now? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> like okay. when you, 
you know, I was looking up pictures and, and you were like, Hey, look up a picture of space force. And I'm like, I already did. I'm like, how did you know that's what I was doing? But it's just, it just shows you that, you know, if you connect as humans to one another, like that, that can happen like there is it was actually a couple of pictures today if you go back and think about it there was more than one because there was a couple other ones that you were you're like you're like i'm looking at that right now and you're like i'm looking at that right now (laughs) because we were talking about iq or you said something about iq and i was like i am just looking that i'm looking at that right now Mm -hmm. you know and we talked about iq and how iq is really just the measuring it's of things that you know, or you've been taught, or, you know, the way that they feel you should think in order to be considered intelligent. And we know that there are different types of intelligences that humans have. Yeah, it's nice you can remember, you know, um, the Bay of Pigs, you know, and everything that happened in history. Um, But if you can't apply it to anything, then what's the point? And no, I mean, there is a point, but you know what I'm saying? Like, Mm -hmm. It's just regurgitation. It's all it is. You know, this is what you're supposed to learn. This is how you're supposed to learn it. And I don't know about you, but there's a lot of things in school that I learned that I was like, well, this didn't really happen this way. So, mm-hmm. but yeah, it's, we- the, it's, it's, they don't let you actually develop an intelligence. They, they force you to follow a model. And then they tell you, they give you a piece of paper and say, okay, you passed, you're intelligent. Now that's a level of intelligence. And that's just not the truth. The intelligence is really the person who, who already figured out all those things before you to set that model, to set that standard for you to get that piece of paper. And we often, all of you have seen somebody on YouTube, like show like 15 hacks on how to do something with a pencil. And you just turn your head sideways like, damn, why didn't I think of that? Why didn't I think of that? Why didn't I think of that? They didn't learn that in school. They're no. just intelligent enough to where they just, it just came to them, boom. And they just, and they just were able to do it. And it's, that's, that's really how I measure intelligence, not regurgitation and being a repeater. Right, exactly. So I wanted to say, because I'm looking at the 2022 Anunnaki code book right now, and the mm-hmm. A, you remember I was telling you, like an A looks like a triangle. Like if you were mm-hmm. to take your hands and do the symbol. Mm-hmm. The, first, the first letter in our alphabet is a, is a triangle. You're right. The very first a. letter. So if I took my hands and I did the triangle symbol, it looks like two hands and my thumbs in the middle. I don't know how to explain it, but. Everybody knows. We all all get it. (laughs) (laughs) If you take the line in the middle of the triangle and you drop it down to the bottom, extend it out a little bit longer, boom, you got a straight triangle. And that's how your alphabet begins. Your alphabet begins with the triangle. It's right there. Like it could have been any other type of, a. it's a symbol. That's all it is. They took symbols. And they, they said that we're going to, and then they go here, we're making words out of these symbols. That's all those are. Yet they chose the triangle as a symbol to start the very beginning. And then if you look at the very last symbol at the yeah. end of the alphabet, it's two triangles yes. open into triangles, a Z, a Z is, and it, that's like when I went to Arizona, I was like, oh yeah, the abbreviation for that is A to Z. It's like, that's the beginning of the alphabet and the end of the <laughs> alphabet. <laughs> what are the odds right this is yeah what are the odds and there's your there's your triangles right there beginning Mm -hmm. and end yep okay so yeah here's the picture of space force which is another triangle and i don't know if we need to talk and if you guys don't know this linda morton howe has been saying often that Space Force began in 1972. And she also has been saying recently, and go back and watch her last video she just posted last Wednesday, that Mm -hmm. the tall whites have been working with the humans here in America since 1972. I don't know how much more evidence I have to give you of other people giving you evidence. Even though they're not coming out and saying that, yes, it's a timeline has been hacked. Yes, 1972 is a time hack. It's right there in your face. Yes right there yep it's the pyramid in your face you can't you can't see it you can't you can't understand it it's in your face and you just sit there and just marvel at it and turn your head sideways like an animal going what the hell is this exactly (laughs) all right okay so taekwondo she putting this one up for me 
Um, I, uh, so you guys already know I'm an expert in martial arts. I've been doing martial arts for over 20 years. Um, I own my own school. You know, I was uh, inducted into the Kickboxing Karate Hall of Fame. I did a television show in, in Japan um, that was had that involved martial arts and 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 uh, ninjas and stuff like that. I've had students become state champions. Like I am deeply embedded in the martial arts, at least before I started doing all this stuff. And I, the first martial art that I actually trained in actually was Wing Chun, but the one that I actually stuck with, because I didn't really agree with a lot of Wing Chun, we're going to get to that in a minute. We're going to start with Taekwondo because Taekwondo was the first martial art that I got really embedded in. And when you go through the forms and those of you who've done Taekwondo, everybody should know what Taekwondo is. It's been pushed around the world. When you go through all your forms, whether it's Pauge or Taeguk, the very last form that you learn to get your black belt is called Choreo. And when you do choreo, it's the first time that you present the triangle in the system is through choreo. And we make this symbol where we put our hands like where our fingertips are almost touching. So we're making this triangle symbol in front of our face and we push that all the way out. So you start real slow in and you push it all the way out. Like you're pushing the triangle out and you look through the triangle like you all see an eye. And by the way, Taekwondo, um, where the, I don't care what school you go to or what, you know, set of type of Taekwondo you, you go to, the roots and history of it comes from Korea, South Korea, and it all comes from the Kuki one. And the Kuki one was established in 1972. And I didn't know that when I started taking Taekwondo. And I have my fourth, I have a fourth degree in Taekwondo now. I've been up for fifth degree, but I just haven't had time to really do it because of all stuff going on. But yeah, and you see Taekwondo, we wear all white. Now, after I got into Taekwondo, after I uh, advanced to Taekwondo, I started getting into Kempo Karate. You, will you switch to the next picture? The guy in the black uniform, no, that's that's Wing Chun. Nope, that's Wing Chun. There you go, that's Kempo. So when I got into Kempo Karate, um, that is the opposite, the complete opposite of Taekwondo. Mm -hmm. And your beginning salutation, which is very, very important in all martial arts is salutations. Well, in Kempo, we have two salutations. We have your basic salutation that you learn when you're a lower rank. And when you become a higher rank and you get into the higher forms like Tiger and a Crane and so forth and, and whatnot, um, I use that one because that's the one most people know. Um, you you learn a your advanced salutation. Now that's a salutation you do for the rest of your Kempo life. Like you don't mm -hmm. do the basic unless you're teaching somebody basic. So your your ending goal for your final salutation is this salutation where you do the triangle. So here mm -hmm. we find the triangle again in the martial arts. And by the way, Kempo is black and Taekwondo wears white, and <laughs> they have been the yin and yang in this country, one was found, was was brought here to the East Coast, the other one to the West Coast within like a year or so within each other. And they have been at odds with each other the entire time, that whole yin and yang, that fighting against each other. Hmm. Um, so, yeah, so you wanna move on to the next one? Sure, this one or the other one, this one. Yeah, that's fine, Wing Chun. Okay, so yeah, okay, right there. So <laughs> this is, you guys all know who Bruce Lee is and how you know important Bruce Lee is to martial arts. And, and I mean, that's what people believe, but whatever. Um, Bruce Lee learned from Wing Chun, and now we know, like, with all these these movies about Wing Chun, first of all, most of that's all bullshit, it's not real, but it does help bring a light to the actual master of Wing Chun, because Bruce Lee was never a master of Wing Chun, he only studied for a few years, and I don't want to get into a lot of that stuff, but the, the, the main person that you know about through Wing Chun is either Ip Man or uh, Wing herself, which actually is, a, it's, people don't know this, it's a female martial art, which is a beautiful martial art, but um, Wing Chun turned me off because it was this, this squared off motion. But as you can see here, he has this triangle above and a triangle below and a triangle where his feet are. Now that is how Wing Chun operates. Can you go to the, uh, and by the way, Ip Man died in 1972. There are more <laughs> 72 stuff. There you go, that picture. So here you can see, this is why I did not agree with Wing Chun because I was a boxer before I started getting into martial arts. Mm -hmm. and Wing Chun, they want you to square your chest off. Like you're completely squared off and you do everything in this triangle motion where you're going to the linear, to the, uh, um, the meridian of the person's body. So that's the way that martial art is actually presented. It's presented in a triangle. And so if you want to move on to the next one. Which, which one's left? Go, go to. Uh, oh, yeah, Gracie. Here, here you go. Now, right now, this has been the biggest buzz, the biggest popular martial arts because of television only. 
um, because of the sport television, because it's a sport and that's just what it is. And, and everybody hears about the Gracie stuff. Well, I, there it is. It's right in front of your face. That is their symbol. Their symbol is the triangle. It has always been a triangle. People say, well, because of the triangle choke. Come on, dude. There are so many different chokes and holds and things in, in jujitsu. That is not why they use the triangle. There's a mm -hmm. whole deeper meaning to this triangle thing that is involved in these martial arts. And those are pretty much like your four foundations in the martial arts right now that people pretty much identify with. Kempo, Taekwondo, because Taekwondo was in the Olympics for a very long time. Um, Kempo and um, what was the other one I was talking about? <laughs> uh, a Wing Chun. Wing Chun. And we all know about that with all the movies with, you know, um, with It Man. And then the Gracies, because they've dominated television, you know, so there you go. And there's the triangle all in the martial arts. It's all right there in your face. In fact, before uh, before my mind was unlocked in 2017 by uh, the alien that came to me and unlocked my mind, um, I had already taken out, because I teach Kempo and Taekwondo. I teach the both because I have a fourth degree in Taekwondo and I have a fourth mm -hmm. degree in Kempo Karate. I also have a... a, a um, a black belt and a sword fighting art as well. But um, I took out the triangles out of my system a long time ago, before I even got into all this stuff, because I felt like I started noticing that there was triangle and I was like, this is kind of weird. And I didn't <laughs> like it. I got this bad feeling about it. So I altered the way we finish choreo, where I say, don't put your hands on triangle motions. We, we put them now out like your, your uh, palms are coming or your the ridge hand is coming out forward instead of making that triangle symbol. And with the Kempo, I make I have my students put the hands completely clasped together. So instead of doing the triangle symbol, because I just felt like it was weird. I started noticing it a long time ago. That was very weird. I'm like, why is this triangle and all this stuff? And I'm like, mm -hmm. I didn't like it. I was like, this is some kind of weird symbolism. So I just took mm -hmm. it out because you don't need it. It doesn't enhance, doesn't change anything for your art. It's just some type of symbolism. That's very interesting. Yeah. yeah. So pretty much the same triangles are have been pushed upon us <laughs> in almost yeah. every aspect of the word. I mean, you had a whole class of geometry, which is pretty much triangles and angles and things like that. Um, hmm. But yeah, I'm sure you could just, there's the Bermuda Triangle where I know <laughs> A lot of people have gone in there and they say they don't, people don't come back out of that triangle either. But, um, and that's not the only one in the world. No, there's, there's other triangle, these no triangular one. triangles like that where people disappear. Yeah. In a lot portal. Side, right. Yeah. Isn't that where the, um, hell, hell box? Yeah. 1972. <laughs> 1972 hell box disappeared in a triangle in Alaska. In the Cessna, right? Yep. Yeah, yep. in the Cessna. In 1972, he was the uh, he was the Speaker of the House, guys. That'd be yep. like Nancy Pelosi, or he was he was a House leader. He was uh, either mm -hmm. Republican or Democrat. I can't remember. But that would be like Chuck Schumer or Mitch McConnell disappearing in, in a. It was actually um, the largest search mm -hmm. in history. I think they said for a missing senator or whatever. You know, yep. so it was of significance, and it happened in 1972. And this guy just up and disappeared the whole plane everybody disappeared in alaska it just they just disappeared yes and i i don't think that's the only time that that's happened but this is just the the one major instance you know the, the most um publicized that no, was um, on monster hunters there, were, yeah. there was like a whole thing about alaska and people disappearing in this triangle on i think it was called monster hunters or whatever mm -hmm. And they brought up Hill Box, and I'm like, there we go, another 1972, but nobody listens to me and nobody cares because you're not supposed to. <laughs> How about do something that you're not supposed to do for a change instead of smoking cigarettes or cheating on your, your spouse or whatever? How about pay attention to 1972 because mm -hmm. you're not supposed to? Yep. It's true. Yeah. I, I don't know the other picture oh this is the pictures from yesterday the triangle symbolism oh, go, go go through them again go back and go through them because the video yesterday the audio was real bad so go ahead and explain them oh gosh okay so um <laughs> if i can remember uh this picture here 
I think I was just saying to look at it kind of as a spaceship. So you have like, um, this is the Tetrax or the Tetriad, um, which is a triangular figure. And you can see like in the middle, there's a face. And then um, you have three points. Uh, to me, it looks like a spaceship. That's what it looks like. And basically, when I was talking about the word triangles, well, tri is three. And technically, angles and angels is a very similar word, if not the same thing. So triangles could be three angels. Every once in a while, you come up with something that's really, really good. Holy spirit. <laughs> <laughs> Every now and then you say something that completely because we were earlier we said something and you said, oh, that could be three angels. And I was like, what? I was like, oh my gosh, I like I never even thought about that. It's so clever. Mm -hmm. Well, because we know that with the Illuminati symbol, the triangle when it comes to the Anunnaki, you know, people call them angels, but they're aliens. So three mm -hmm. angels consisting of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And some type of triad um, is three angels or three aliens or three Anunnaki's. Um, so it could be also representing the three planets, right? That could be Jupiter, Saturn, and maybe Earth. Could be, yeah. You know what's promised. Yep. Yep. Because our planet, unfortunately, everyone has been promised to a different race of people. And when, I'm when this is all said and done, yeah, you're right. When this is all said and done, and they're done experimenting with the humans, and the Jupiters get to take this planet, mm -hmm. I wouldn't doubt if they end up putting a circle, uh, a, a rings around this planet Earth, like they've done Saturn. Like they moved yeah. off of Jupiter, they went to Saturn, they took that planet over, put rings around it, and now they're here on Earth. And when they get done with this, they'll probably put rings around it, and that means that's a big force field. I mean, stay, stay the hell out. Do not come here. We, this is ours. We, we own this now. Right, you're not yeah. getting past there unless you're going through a portal, and then that's probably difficult at that point because they're, you know, they have technology that probably picks up on where portals pop up at. Yeah, Jupiter has rings though. The Jovian rings, it's it, mm -hmm. they're faint though, mm -hmm. not like Saturn, it, right? Is that right? Yeah, yeah, I think they do. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> and, and those of you who are are being brainwashed and told the reptilians are the bad guys and stuff, you know they have been on this planet this is a problem for them too the mm -hmm. humans and you listen to last and a lot of stuff i tell you a lot of things we talk about and stuff and you go back and you find this evidence things and i always go back to them like well Lasseter was talking about this and that in that script even right now this war she said in 1999 that in 10 to 20 years there would be a war and the war started technically on you in 2020 on you humans right mm -hmm. and 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 like she talks about that but um it's a problem for them too, because this is their world too. They're, I know you don't want to hear this, but you know, they're being victimized just like you are. And, and them, and they have to watch this extinction go on, you know, for this is this, this is going to be a seventh extinction and they keep seeing it happen to you. So of course that there's, there's probably some pity there, but there's also some disconnectors. Like they're just going to be wiped out again. And then there's all this, this uh, BS to make you to demonize them. But we don't see any, it's all bird worship. And the bird yeah. worship is all part of the triangle. That's why on the dollar bill, there is a bird and there's a triangle. And that tells you it's all in your face. It's all Anunnaki worship. It's all right there in your face. And yeah. no, you're not going to go some magical place, some disconnected place where you're going to slave worship to some God for an eternity. That's just not what, that's not the case. There's a good possibility to a lot of humans because since 1972, the population has doubled. It was almost 4 billion, and right now it's almost 8 billion. That's too many people in some respects. But it's a possibility that some of these people are literally soulless. Like there's just so many, and they just keep coming out that there's not even souls to catch up to get in these bodies. And that's why we get people like right now, this generation, and the last generation was the zombie generation, the Z. And now it's the alpha generation. And that's what you guys are in right now is the alpha generation. Look it up. And it's yeah. just like that that was like the time when it started getting tipping to the point where you're getting, you know, some of these humans that are being born, they're not even, there's nothing there. That's why they're so connected to the black screen 
because there's not there's a disconnect because they're just going through the motions of being like what a human's supposed to be like and it's hard to take in and i'm not saying all the humans do you need humans are like that but it's good possibility it's a good majority of them like that right yeah and the reptilians have to see this and they have to see you guys get extinct again and and it's like they're probably sitting back on when are they going to do it to us now they're not all on this world they have portals going to other worlds and stuff i'm not saying that they're that they're just trapped here too um but this is their home they evolved here with the dinosaurs Mm -hmm. long before the human the early hominid evolved they have been here that long and it's i think you guys should take another step back and take another look at it you were told long time ago if you're european you came here to this country that the red men were the cannibals they were eating people and then you found that was a lie and then you're told that black people were uh were soulless black souls that these beings because their skin was black that they were you know subhuman and then you come to find out that was a lie well now you're being told that the green man is the is the is the root of all evil and that's a lie again you know you just got to pull yourself out of the lies and just just take a step back and and find a neutral position Mm -hmm. and just just look at it from a neutral position and, and then you'll start to understand why these triangles are in your face and right you can't figure it out and then you can see the veritas, which is the truth. The truth is the triangles, like I said, were the spaceships or a spaceship. And this picture to me just looks like a spaceship landing, probably, you know, with the clouds and dust and light around it. Um, now, what was so- this picture from? What was, wait, go back to that. What was that picture from that blue, that picture you're just looking at? What is that you about? Ask, it's... Um, this is from a Catholic church, Our Lady of something. I'll have to look it up again. Why are they pushing the triangle in the church? Yeah, it's um, it's it's on an Aki worship. <laughs> We're they're worshiping the technology. That's all it's it a is. Portal. Yeah, and then you have the triangle here, and this time you have Yohe Vavhe or Y W. I can always get it mixed up. But Jehovah, Yehovah, however you want to say it, inside the triangle, and you have the disc. So why they always talk about, you know, spaceships being in a disc, or you get the word disc is probably from this. Um, I think that's, so that yeah. So just kind of to your point, and us talking about it yesterday, as far as, uh, you know, the worship of their technology. And this is how I perceive this picture. Um, take, take, take us all the way back to um, the book, the book drawing that you had with the Jupiters. And then we can close it out from there with the, um, the pages that you had that showed the triangle with all that stuff in there. We're talking about God and, and the number, numerical number 72. Hold on a second. You got that picture? And just so, just to, while she's flipping through trying to find that picture, just to clear it up, guys, I'm not saying that all the reptoids want to be your friends. Like, there's probably a good uh, group of them that absolutely have just, ha- or just don't care for the human species at all because of the brainwash. And you just, when you can't get through to, like, I see it personally. Like, I personally see it, like, when I put the evidence in front of some people, people that I, I'm like, this person's intelligent. I put the evidence in front of them and they literally have a total disconnect from reality of evidence in front of their face. And they just, they go into like as much as they can to get away from it. And it's like, what do you mean that you can't, it's like, it's right. What can't you see? Right? Like it's, mm-hmm. it's right here in front of your face. So imagine me going through that. And I've only been here, you know, since 1972 but imagine <laughs> beings that, you know, reptilians who have been alive for hundreds of years and they've seen it happen over and over and over with extinctions and stuff. And they've and it's just like, you know, what, what can you do? You can't like you can't what, how you help these people. Once the Anunnaki get their claws in you, it's over. It's done. It's a done deal. The brainwashing it's, you know, and then look, the tall whites and all that. I, I already did a video. I showed you like, you know how this who's blanking in the sky we never could figure it out it damn straight the reptilians because they love the sun 
So mm-hmm. this is their planet too. And they want to enjoy the sun. They want to enjoy, why would they blanket the sky? Yeah. In 1972, you know, Operation Popeye. I mean, it's just like, come on guys. You know, it, it, this is to help keep you down, you mm-hmm. know, to help keep you, keep you dumbed down. So that way they can continue to do what they want to do, extinct you out. Right. I, I found the picture. So it's the tetriax of the letters of the tetragrammatron, and it adds up to 72 by geometria, gematria. So the tetrax is a triangular figure consisting of 10 points. It's a mystical symbol. And you can see, you know, how they added it up, you know, based upon, um, they, it's a cipher. That's the term they use. And cipher is an algorithm for performing encryption or decryption or code. So if you're an alien species, how many other languages, you know, need a cipher or a decryption? I mean, you would just need a translation, right? You wouldn't need a cipher or a decrypt or to have to decrypt the code that's weird hmm? yeah, it's an it's an angular language and, and it's 72 is right there in your face mm-hmm. and like i tell people about the year 72 right and they're just like ah, oh, yeah whatever you know it's just like like how much more do you got how much more do evidence does people need it's in yeah. your face the triangle is in your face 72 is the triangle it is and then this particular um artist francesco goya you know, the name of God is in Gematria 72. So he created this fresco, the adoration, the adoration of the name of God, which he did in 1772. So it's, it's all just so weird. And then here's another one about the tetragrammaton. Um, and, you know, we talked about the tetriax. And when I think of that word, I think of like Thor and um, I think of the Transformers and I think of... Sorry, I I cut cut out there. Go ahead. Oh, yeah, you're okay. So when I think of the word Tetrax, I know we we talked about it yesterday. I think about the movie Thor, you know, and Mm -hmm. how um, Loki was trying to get his hands on it. Um, What was it called? It's a very similar. Oh, the, tet- the Tetrax, which was a cube. Yes. And we know that the Jupiters worship a cube. They do. We know that, that the whole cube thing. And there is something else too that you had brought up before that you figured out. And we should we should do a whole video on one day. We should do a whole video on Marvel in 1972 and all these these Jupiter stuff and all those things. But you had figured out something about the gate. Go ahead and explain that to everybody because I think it was very like you were you're all over it with the 72 stuff on the gateway. Are you talking about the twelve, the twelve gates, or no? The gate, the the fact that in the um, which Thor movie was it where his sister came back? And oh, she Ragnarok. Yeah, Ragnarok. Ragnarok. Memory. Yeah, right? because the because the gatekeeper, the guy who plays the gatekeeper for um, the Rainbow Bridge was born in 1972. Amdahl. Yeah. So the the big tall black guy with the gold eyes which is funny the gold eyes you know i talk about that often mm-hmm. but the big black guy with the gold eyes who sees everything in the universe and, and holds the key to the gate he the actor was born in 1972 and then he gets replaced with the other yeah. actor who was born yeah. in 1972 who takes yeah. over the gate mm-hmm. and he was Bo- dr bones yeah in, in star trek and Star Trek, and they had 72 people in cryopods. Sure did. It's like, what more? <laughs> it's, just, it's just, it's so deep. And people are just like, they're like, oh, you know, about this and that. You're just trying to spend, it's like, dude, it's like right there. It's in your face. Mm-hmm. You know, and then like the whole thing with the Tetrac and 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 in uh, Transformers, they also have to get a cube, right? Like it's the same thing. And we should do a video just on the cube and we're, we're going off on something else here. We're talking about triangle, but in the <laughs> Cuban transformers, I think those are called something like a tetriac or, te- or, or I can't remember what it was. I'm pretty sure it sounds like the same thing. There was a subscriber that 
it was on, I think it was on my cube video that made a comment about the cubes being triangles. Like if you were to position it together, I don't remember exactly. I'll have to go back and look at what um, they said, but kind of like to your point, it's all connected somehow. So very interesting. Yeah, I mean, we were talking earlier about how it's a never ending, um, there's like an infinite amount of information like you and I could make videos for the rest of our lives, probably on this topic, and it would just continue forever. <laughs> and it always, yeah, and it always takes you back to the, you know, the, the, the 72 and all this stuff. And it's just, it's overwhelming. That's for sure. It's definitely it, overwhelming. It's a lot. <laughs> and it's, and it really sucks that nobody really sees it. Like you get, some people are kind of, they're seeing it, but like the door hasn't really been kicked open enough for them and it's not their fault. It's literally physically blocked in your mind to stop mm -hmm. you from seeing it. It's so clever. It's so it, clever. If you're an invading species, you would have to do that. Yep. You would have to do it. You'd have to turn it into a religion and, uh, and I mean, even in the Bible and I know we, you know, don't look at that as too much of a valuable source, but if they're providing it to us as a, like, Hey, this is what's going to happen kind of scenario, you know, they, they put it in your face and they make it into a religion. Um, and I know revelation, that's an unveiling of what has either happened on their planet previously, or what's going to happen to this planet. And I know you were talking about earlier, the Jupiters, um, you know, wanting to get rid of the humans here on this planet, which makes sense because if you don't believe, or if you don't have this mark, um, which could be DNA, um, you will get, you know, you're, you're a lesser being. That's just all there is to it. You're literally a lesser being you'll get distinct. You'll get, um, yeah. You're a lesser, yeah, you guys are considered lesser beings to them. You don't have telepathy. You don't have the telekinesis. None of these things are unlocked. You can't see things that are in front of your face. It makes you look so stupid. And so like, like we talked about with people think that, that humans are evolving because they're using technology to make up for their, their lack of ev evolution. And that's really <laughs> what it is. You're instead of the humans all becoming neutral and all trying to figure out how to unlock telepathy because all countries in the world have governments that already are experimenting with humans using telepathy. Mm -hmm. That should have made the whole world stop and everybody say, hey, let's all try to figure this thing out together so we can advance as a species. You want to go to other planets, figure out te telepathy first. You know, right. figure out that start, then start, once you guys start figuring out telepathy, you work together as a species instead of a species at odd with each other. Mm -hmm. um, um, then you start working on telekinesis and you start working on these other things. And then suddenly you don't have to worry about fighting over resources. It's mm -hmm. absurd and stupid, yeah. you know, and the, the human species can't do that because you have been physically manipulated from the beginning of this um, I don't know what you, this generation, this generation, what I mean by this seventh generation of human mm -hmm. to stop you from advancing forward. And because of that, the Jupiters, they already know that. And they're just like, you guys are throwaways because they already have these things. They're just waiting until the time comes when this extinction happens. So they can just freely do what they want to do and do the things that they normally do on their own planet. You know, it's, it's, a, it's very clever. And it makes the case for them that, yes, you know, when they say that they are the only ones to, you know, go to heaven or when they say they're the only ones that, you know, they're going to take the earth. It makes sense. They're telling you that they have the right over you. You're an experiment. You're a clone. Yep. It's all bad. It's all destitute and destruction. <laughs> it is all bad. I mean, and if you, this is um, the temple, the the Jupiter temple, which if you can see it, it has a way of looking like it could be a pyramid as well. It's just mm -hmm. a square, but, um, 
go through these again. And did you have anything else you want to say before I wrap it up? No, that's pretty much it. I got I got to get going anyhow. And this I think damn, we we've been on here what almost an hour and a half. Yeah. <laughs> no, nobody's gonna watch the video. <laughs> nobody's gonna. Nobody's. If you made it this far, give her a <laughs> thumbs up. You, yeah. <laughs> In the comments, I made it to the end. <laughs> yes, and um, a gold star for you. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Um, so this actually sealed it for me. Um, the eight-pointed star of the Anunnaki, which a lot of people, I'm sure, are aware of this information by looking at this. Now, if you see the top, it says Jupiter. And... It just points back to the fact that the Jupiters are here. They're from another planet. And you can see the Jewish symbolism. You can see their. Um, oh, you said the name. You shouldn't have said it. Jupiter? No, the other one. Oh, boy. Yeah, because, you know, you know they, 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 you know, they control everything. It's OK. It's my hypothesis. How about that? Um, <laughs> So the eight-pointed star of the Anunnaki represents the God of heaven, who is called Anu. Now, Anu is also Jupiter, the God Jupiter or Zeus. You know, um, you did a video on that also, a sky God. Mm -hmm. This is just proof that, how do you say the Jupiters are from Jupiter? <laughs> yeah. No, so, the tall whites they, they can they they are your creators. The tall whites are your creators. The the Anunnaki are the imposters that came in and and represented the tall whites, you know, as workers for the tall whites. And they just went with one. They just said that was the true God, which is a tall mm -hmm. white God, by the way, with white hair, which we all know. We've all you know, which is all the same. Is the same as Odin and and um and Zeus and stuff. You know, it's just a tall white. But the Anunnakis <laughs> came in and, and took over, and then they promised the jupiters that they would get this planet and that's yeah. pretty much what the crux of it all is and they just said hey mm -hmm. you know we, we we keep extincting them and they're going to be they're, they're going to wipe that again and maybe the eighth generation or maybe at some point in time the end of this whole thing for your species is that you because you're getting leapfrog through um that you're going to be that you won't be here on this planet maybe they're just going to take them to another planet i don't know i have no idea i don't know what what the end result is what the tall whites have in in store but um you know that's it's very clear when you look at the imagery of god right yeah. it's a tall white man uh-huh <laughs> with and white it, hair and he and, and he has he has these beings who are humanoid looking beings with wings who serve him and yeah. under those beings they promised and helped take and fight wars for jupiters who had no home he yep. came out of nowhere so it's it it does tell their story but yeah. you aren't in it i'm sorry you're not in that club nope. no matter how much you want to pray no matter how much you want to worship you're not in that club yeah and it's just proof of the fact that zeus is jupiter and the jupiters are here on this planet and that is where they came from. Isn't it weird that a lot of the gods, um, the so-called gods, are mm -hmm. planet names? Mm -hmm. It could just be I, where, I think, where they reside from. Well, I think that's the same thing as like when they when they uh, memorialize a park or something, and they call it like Lincoln Park or whatever, right? It's mm -hmm. like because that one human which by the way is a jupiter but <laughs> that one human did like something of oh, significance yeah <laughs> and if that human was like did something significance on that planet and then now they go to another planet or whatever they just name that human after that planet like or that being after a planet they say that that you know that that was such a representative that's taking this planet here so you just call him jupiter but that's really not what his name probably is right right his name is probably something else, but they're just giving him the whole planet name. That's like if you were to go to another planet and you're the only Earthling to go there with, with massive technology and stuff, and you change things on another planet with a bunch of, you know, caveman people, they would just call you Earthling. They wouldn't call you George, Frank, Henry, you know, Melissa, Kim, or whatever. They would say Earthling, mm -hmm. you know, that's, and, and so, and oh, they come from Earth. 
you know, it's yeah. the earthling that comes from earth. And they would say that this is a God from, from earth. The earthling is from earth. So it makes sense. That's why they say the Jupiter, Jupiter, you know, from that planet. Yeah. So it's uh, just, it just, yeah. Ta-da. It just <laughs> said, it just ties them to the fact that they're from Jupiter and yep. it's right there in your face. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. We should, we should, uh, we should close right, this out. Yeah, let's stop torturing everybody. Thank you yeah. for with us if you've made it this far we appreciate it yeah put in there say i made it to the end and then we'll give yeah. you a gold star. <laughs> yeah you get a gold star you'll, you'll get a little uh you'll get a little something extra or something <laughs> right <laughs> oh, for putting up with all of our ramblings but all mm -hmm. right well, thanks for being on my channel again rad appreciate it uh it's it's uh it's i think it's it's better that people because a lot of times the information i put out on my channel solely by myself it's not information i just get from myself or the it, i get a lot of stuff from you and some other people too you know people will text me often and say hey did you know this happened 1972 or so and so or whatever and then mm -hmm. i add that into my you know i do my research onto it and then i add it into my video when i talk about this stuff so it's important for them to hear us both going back and forth because there's stuff that when me and you're talking on these videos live that we have not talked about yet like we'll figure we'll, we'll figure things out right then and there and that's exactly how we do it when we're talking yeah it's you know, true off air mm -hmm. yeah we spent we have a lot of like those moments and then you know i'll just say i'm done but i'm really not done you know yeah <laughs> <laughs> and before you guys think that the triangle isn't that bad i just i just want to point out that when you get in your car and you have to hit the oh shit button it's the hazard button and that button is a triangle. <laughs> no, it's right. It's in front of your face every single day. It's on your dollar. It it's in your car. It's yep. everywhere. Hey, guess and what? It's also the recycle symbol <laughs> is a triangle. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's a recycle symbol because they're going to extinct you. <laughs> I'm bringing another, another generation <laughs> of humans. But we're going to do this again. Mr. Just Sunshine, that's what they call me. Mr. Sunshine, well, that's what I call. You. Okay, positive message before we go. I will say this positive message before okay. we go. If you guys start finding a neutrality, then mm -hmm. you won't be so worried about all this stuff. It literally, the neutrality is a way forward. It is an evolution for you, whether they extinct you out or not, which they're, they are going to extinct you out. But if you're able to find that neutrality now and find that space in you, then that means that you're most likely a real human being, yeah. that you're able to find that, you know what, I'm not at odds with the other humans, mm -hmm. because I am a true human being, or you're a, a being, a sentient being, a sentient being is most likely a neutral being to its own species, it's a being that is at odds with its own species is not a sentient being that doesn't even make any sense. True. It just doesn't add up, there's something wrong or something inherently wrong with destroying your own kind right. and neutrality is the only way forward find that neutral point inside of you every time you start you think that oh the republicans are bad the democrats are bad they're the anunnaki are bad the reptilians are bad you know find that neutrality and step back away from that and try to see it from their point of perspective but don't agree with either or just understand them and mm -hmm. then you'll understand yourself and understanding yourself means you're understanding you're becoming or you are a true sentient being not at odds with yourself or at the self-destruction every person that you hate is yourself yeah. they are a reflection of yourself because you're not sentient wow that was oh. <laughs> that's my that's my that's that's you, been my uh, mo all star. along neutrality yep i get a gold star you do <laughs> you get okay, a couple gonna... all righty all right Thank in. Yep. All right. You want to close this out? And with yep. that, and with that, enjoy the rest <laughs> of the time that you guys have left. <laughs>